Why won't they do what I'm asking them to do? I had a great conversation with an EBOS student by email today. <gasps> I had a gut feeling you would be online now. Hi. I can give you advice. I'm great at advice. Uh-oh. And I think we can all identify with this. He's struggling to get somebody to do something they're supposed to do. So how do we get people to do the things that we've asked them to do? Look into my eyes, look into my eyes. Don't look around here, look into my eyes, look into my eyes. And you're back on YouTube. This guy's been badgering someone for quite a while and they still haven't done it. So how do you get people to do things? Well, if I had the answer to this, I'd be a millionaire because you lot, you lot would all be buying Nibosh courses from Compassa instead of buying them from all those other crappy course providers out there and then coming to YouTube for the answers. But I do have some tricks to share with you, tricks that I've learned during my 20 plus year career in health and safety. Now, this particular person I was speaking to is a production manager and one of his team leaders handed in their notice in May. It is now September as of time of filming and the HR department still haven't made an advert for this job. They haven't advertised the job internally or externally and this manager is a person down. So he's been badgering them for quite some time to the point where, unfortunately, He's had a bit of a meltdown We're doomed! and lost his temper and he's behaved in a, in let's say an unprofessional way, a way which wasn't ideal with the HR department. This sounds reasonable. Uh, that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah. And now he's going through a little bit of disciplinary pain. So how do you get people to do what you ask them to do? Well, here's a trick for you. I usually do this by asking questions and questions are usually enough. One of the questions I like to ask is this. Can I count on you to do this? Can I count on you to do that? Can I count on you to do X? Now I use this in training all the time. If I'm doing classroom training, I might give people 30 minutes for their lunch break and I'll say to them, can I count on you all to be back here in exactly 30 minutes? And I will look around the room and I'll look at every single person in the eyes. And I will get a nod. There will be the most dire consequences for you and your family. So I get a nod from each and every person or I get a yes. Now, if they don't nod or if they don't say yes, then I'll ask them again. I'll, I'll look at them directly and I'll go, John, can I count on you to come back in 30 minutes? Yeah. Right. And usually they will at that point respond with a nod or a yes or something like that. So the tip is this, when you make a request, ask a really simple question, which is, can I count on you to do that? And when they say yes, then it becomes a pinky promise, a little pinky promise. Yeah, it's like a little verbal contract that you have made, the two of you, and it makes all the difference. Now, sometimes I might give you a bit of a vague answer. They might say, yeah, or I'll have to get back to you on that. And I think that's actually what happened in this situation. HR said, oh, I'll have to get back to you on that. That's my HR voice. So what you have to do in that case is follow up with another question, which is, and when will you get back to me? Because what that does is that that gives them a deadline to adhere to. So when you ask the question, when will you get back to me? They might say something like, I'll get back to you by Friday. Is that okay? And you say, brilliant, by Friday. You'll get back to me by Friday. That's absolutely fine. I'll come back and see you on Friday if I don't hear from you. Now this gives them a deadline. And when that day arrives, and it might well arrive when they haven't got back to you and they don't have the answer, you can go back to them and say, Hi, Julie. Now you promised me that you would get back to me by today about that job advert. You promised me. You promised me. Ooh. Now you can use other questions as well, like when are you going to do it? Who's going to do it? How are you going to do it? The idea is, is that you're going to elicit some uh, specific uh, answers which are essentially a type of action plan. I'm going to get this person to do this and then that and then I'm going to check it and I'll be done by that date. You're getting the person to kind of plan the action in their head in front of you and each one of these statements, each one of these answers is a promise they're making to you on how things are going to be, be done. Now if you're really struggling to get something done, let's say they don't issue the job advert, you could go back to them and, and say 
Do you agree that it's important to advertise a, a vacancy when there is a vacancy? Do you agree that this is important? Do you agree that it's important to do this? Now, this is one that you could use a little bit later when you're, you know, if you're still struggling, you use this when escalating the problem. Do you agree that it's completely inappropriate to show children of nursery school age pictures of men in leather bondage gear? Is a question that I genuinely asked recently if you've been following the news. So, try this one. If you're being fobbed off by HR, do you agree that it's important to advertise a job vacancy when there is a vacancy? This is a community. We don't bother the outside world. We don't want it bothering us. Or if you're a safety manager, a safety professional, and you catch somebody who's not wearing their PPE, would you agree that everyone in this business is required to follow the agreed safety rules? <laughs> is that a crown you wear? <laughs> this it's just my helmet. Or let's say you've got a, a manager who's quite happy to break the law. Do you agree that it's important that all of us comply with whatever the law says? We didn't burn him! And hopefully you're going to be getting some yeses to these questions. You agree this? Yes. Do you agree that? Yes. It's important to phrase the question in such a way that a no is very, very difficult. They're more than likely to say yes. Now, it's entirely possible that you'll get all these yeses, but you're still not getting them to do the, th the thing that needs to be done. They're still like, yeah, I agree with that, but it's like, eh. You can just ask, what's stopping you from doing it? So, so Julie, I'd, I'd like to know, what is stopping you from placing the job advert? What is getting in your way? So by asking what's stopping, you're going to be eliciting the problems, the obstacles they have. And it could be for any safety issue. So what's stopping you from wearing your hard hat? So what's stopping you from doing your inspection every week? And what's stopping you from doing that risk assessment? Oh, well, you know, the world's run by reptiles. Now we are here focusing on the negative, but that's okay. What we're trying to do is elicit to get them to explain the obstacles that they're facing so that you might be able to assist them with those obstacles. There might be something that you can do to help to unblock the situation. You might have to go speak to a manager and get some kind of budgetary approval. If someone's failing to wear their PPE, then maybe there's a they, they, they can't access it, they can't get replacements, maybe it's uncomfortable, maybe it's too hot. And again, that's a problem that you can help solve. So one of the jobs that we have as a safety professional is to get people to tell us what's stopping them from doing things the right way. And then we fix those things, we fix the obstacles, and we remove all of the excuses that they have. And they are frankly just excuses most of the time, but you take away the excuses until you get to a point where it's a case of, we've provided the hard hats, we've put the hard hat in a safe area, we've tried several hard hats, and you said to me you were happy with the hard hat you've now been given, you've been shown how to use it, where to use it, and when to use it. Please tell me, what do I have to do to get you to wear this hard hat from now on. They're either gonna comply or you're gonna go down the disciplinary route. And if that's what you have to do, so be it. You and your pride and your ego. But hopefully at this point, they're just gonna apologize, say sorry, and promise to wear it in future. So now, can I count on you? Can you promise me that you'll wear that hard hat from now on in future? Yes. Okay, pinky promise. Don't do the pinky promise, that's a bit camp. Anyway, hope you found that useful. Any suggestions, any comments, any questions, please drop them to me in the comments below. Catch you later.